Diego Baca has built some of the largest Great Ball Contraption builds I've ever seen. Arguably, some of the largest in existence. His GBC Tower 2 is over 2 meters tall, and it's big enough for Luke Skywalker to bullseye with his T-16 back home. What's always stood out to me is his use of the DAC to Control Lab to control his creations. He's able to control up to 32 motors individually with varying speed and direction using four control labs. He can then start and stop entire machines with the press of a single button. This is all thanks to his custom software, which is available on his website. I have an older video showing it in action, along with other third-party software solutions. For those that are unfamiliar, the Dactic Control Lab was an educational product by the LEGO Group, teaching kids to control and automate their creations using a personal computer. If you've spent much time on my channel, you've probably seen me using it in my own projects. I've wanted one from the first time I saw it in the LEGO catalog almost 30 years ago. It would have blown my mind to see how powerful it really was and what would be possible in the future. One of Diego's more recent projects is using the Raspberry Pi with a custom web server to send commands to the Dacta Control Lab from a phone or any device with a web browser. You can even forward the port to the web server and control it from anywhere in the world. I can't speak to the security implications of this, but I had to test it and see if it worked. And it does. Here I am controlling a Lego train while buying socks at a Target across town. I would have loved something like this as a kid. I love controlling things with my computer once I learn how to. Diego's use case is a bit more practical. We can use a phone to set up a Wi-Fi hotspot for the Raspberry Pi to connect to. Then we can easily control everything from a phone. I can't imagine using the control lab with a smaller footprint. Sure, you could lug a full computer, TOS terminal, or laptop with you to a convention, or go full Evan K and bring an entire 80s data center with you, but I do think this is a very practical solution with very little power consumption and software overhead. The Pi boots up in seconds and is ready to go. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of how all this works, I want to encourage you to check out Diego's channel to see his creations. He's also been featured on Beyond the Brick a few times. His GBC Tower 2 is absolutely insane. This beast weighs in at over 110 pounds and has over 45,000 pieces. If the modules throughout the tower look familiar, they are by the world famous GBC builder, Akiyuki. Diego sent me a care package with everything I needed to try this out. The build materials is available on his website along with step-by-step -step instructions. First, we connect an OTG USB adapter, which goes to the USB to serial adapter. Then a right angle USB cable for our power input. Then we need to load the Raspberry Pi software onto the SD card using the Raspberry Pi imager. We'll need to configure our host name, username and password, Wi-Fi information, and enable SSH, which is found under the next tab. I missed this the first time around and it really slowed me down. Also, I would recommend buying an OTG USB adapter, as well as an HDMI mini adapter, so you can use the Pi with a monitor and keyboard. This is especially useful if you plan on changing wireless networks, like from your home Wi-Fi to a hotspot. With that done, let's fire up the Raspberry Pi. The first boot will take a minute or two, and then we can connect remotely via SSH. First, run the command sudo apt update. Then we'll install git using this command and answer yes when prompted by typing Y and then press enter. Then we'll use git to copy over the installation files for the control lab IO remote software. We'll navigate to the folder and then run the installer. This will take some time. In my case, about 12 minutes. With that done, we are able to connect to the web interface using the hostname or IP address. Let's power off the Pi, and then we'll use the null modem adapter to connect to the control lab and then connect the power supply. Let's power on the Pi again, and it should boot up very quickly, allowing us back into the web interface. Pressing the chain icon will connect to the control lab and allow us to control the outputs. No commands will be sent while in pause mode. 
We can set the direction and speed of each output individually and then pause it to see it in action. The speed and direction of the outputs can be adjusted while unpaused as well. Pretty cool, right? Once we have everything working, we can install a Pi into this custom 3D printed case. Diego sent me this one, but he does have plans available for download to make your own. I did a fair bit of testing with the control lab and it does have some limitations. I was able to run three 9V trains at the same time, but the more trains are in motion, the slower they will go. My dual motor locomotives wouldn't even run as they draw too much power for a single output to handle. While I have combined multiple outputs together using an RCX, I'm not sure how well this would work on the control lab. I then tried to run a GVC layout powered solely by the control lab. This worked pretty well, but with all eight modules running at once, the voltage dropped to about seven volts. I've often seen people ask how many modules a single power source can handle, but there's never an easy answer. In short, it depends. Some modules will draw more power than others, and they will likely vary throughout their cycle. Just like how the 9 volt train controller is limited by the LM317 voltage regulator, the control lab is limited by a 78S09 regulator, which can provide two amps. I may devote some time in the future to providing more power. Honey, did you put hubcaps on the lawnmower? Yeah! To the control lab, just as I've done with the 9 volt train controller. If you'd like to be involved with such a project, keep an eye out in our Discord, and I may post on your breaks form as well. All in all, this is a very fun project, and I want to give Diego a huge thanks for sending this all over. I'm sure this isn't the last you'll see of this software on the channel. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I realize this isn't a project for everyone, as the control hub interfaces can be very hard to find. In my haul videos, I often share tips and tricks for locating good deals on hard to find items such as this. I also have several videos featuring the control app. It is one of my favorite devices that LEGO ever produced. If you want to help support my channel, you can become a member for as little as $2 a month. I've never done any sponsored content to date, so every bit of support helps. Just hitting the like button or sharing a video means the world. Be sure to check out Diego's YouTube channel, website, and social media linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and remember to play well. Okay, so did I really leave a camera running all day while I went to work in Target? No, but when I left, the train was over here by the track contacts and it ended up over there. So it definitely drove while I was gone. And there's the socks I bought.